Hi, this is Paul Neal at Pen Productions, and uh, today I'm going to do a tutorial on how to build muscles for characters like this. It's a uh, centrosaur, and uh, we're going to uh, get the uh, parts of the body jiggling and bouncing around a little bit and uh, working with that. We're going to be using the flex modifier entirely for this uh, and working with a few uh, extra tools. So, one, I'm just going to close off the, uh, the new. Um, layers and whatnot. I don't really need them at this point in time, so we'll just hide those off and let's work on, uh, on this base mesh. So it's a pretty typical mesh right now, nothing fancy that I have going on. Just a skin modifier on top of uh, an edible poly model so that uh, I can build and, uh, and work with this. And um, if you look at the mesh, it's a uh, you know, reasonable density mesh uh, for, uh, let's say, a feature level or series level type character. And it's also using um, displacement maps and whatnot to get the extra wrinkles and everything going. So we're going to start working on the, the back leg here and what we're going to use is the uh, ribbon tools and we're going to be using the freeform modeling tools. So we'll skip down to edible poly here because you need to do this to uh, be able to build these new models and pieces. And I'm going to go to poly draw and say new object and we're going to call this um, uh, thigh muscle and so I've got that uh, uh, set up now I can now just start drawing right on my object here so I'm going to say uh, draw on surface pick and draw the surface and let's just stand it off a little bit we'll see where we where we need to uh, be with the offset as we start to create so it's going to be this area around in here that's going to be uh, kind of jiggly and, and wobbly and we're going to be able to, uh, be able to control this sort of muscle mass down around the front of the leg so I'm going to use the retopo tools. I'm going to start with the uh, topology tool, nice and simple, and just consider some edge flow. Now one of the things you want to try and address when we do this is keeping things nice and even. And the idea being is, is the more even it is, the better it will, uh, will deform. So I want to follow a couple of these down the leg here. And we'll just see kind of where they end up. I want to keep this as even as possible right now. Extend this down a bit. And now we're going to uh, carry one across. I think I'm actually going to carry these right up and over the top here. I'm being you know, pretty haphazard the way I'm generating these because we're going to be able to move them around as we go. So let's start our top one in there. And let's just start building now some uh, nice quads over the area that we want to, uh, I want to be able to control. You could also uh, pull the uh, polygons right out of the model that you have and, uh, and start working with it. And uh, it's going to become a little tighter in this area here. And I'm going to extend these down with the extension tools. And then let's just finish this one off here. It looks like it may not even draw on a couple of them in there. So we're just going to patch those up and fill those into place uh, really easily. So I'm just going to go into the uh, uh, isolate mode and we're just, going to, we're just going to fill these in. So this can be done uh, pretty easily uh, with a couple of tools. One uh, that allows you to be able to fill it in is just the uh, step build. If you want to uh, know how to use these tools better, then um, uh, it's... Uh, it's best to go and uh, do my uh, tutorial on uh, that followed the uh, process of retopologizing a head, basically, and, and setting up a head. So we can use these tools now just to work this out a little bit more. I'm just going to go back and show it. I think I want another edge loop down this part here, so just to make it fit a bit better. And uh, we'll use the tools for putting it up on top. That's probably pretty good, other than just a little bit of pushing around. So I'm going to use the move brush, form and move, and just pull it around. We're going to pull it right down around close. Something like that. Move this around a bit better around the back in case we need it. And another one that's really good, because again, we want this pretty easy, uh, even, is the uh, relaxed brush. And we want to just even it out, and it'll 
even them out all the way around. If you hit the edges, the uh, edges will uh, suddenly pull in really tight, so you want to try to avoid them uh, unless you want to be pulling them back out again. That's okay, we can do a little bit of that. Again, we'll do this nice big brush now just to make sure I move everything. So that looks pretty good. So we're going to start with this one. And I think I want to just subdivide it up just a bit more just to get it uh, a little bit cleaner um, and a little bit nicer. So I'm going to I'm just going to go and probably even just do this faster with the uh, subdivision methods here and probably just to tessellate. I'm just going to open up the dialog and we can even round it out a little bit with the tessellate or we could uh, just use of course the mesh smooth and mesh smooth it up. So either way so I'm just going to go with a mesh smooth and just going to stick those back to the surface again and make sure they're good. So I got a nice clean mesh to work with. Um, might even be higher topology than I really needed but we're going to live with it for this tutorial. So now what I want to do is I want to get this moving with the model. Now I have some bad animation on here that I added really fast for the tutorial just to, to get some movement going so we can test it. And I'm going to uh, take this patch and I'm going to skin wrap it onto the model. So we grab the model there and skin wrap it on. And the first thing I'm going to do with this is just check and make sure that it actually looks like it's deforming pretty good and adjust any values that I need to. You know, uh, playing around with the uh, fall off or whatever I need to to try and get it to, to work. Generally it's pretty good the way they are. So I think it's looking pretty good. I'm just going to leave it at the defaults. And I'm going to say convert to skin so that the whole thing gets converted to the skin modifier and I want to delete the wrap. You will have to delete the wrap because the wrap currently holds reference to the uh, mesh of the body of the character and we're actually going to have the body of the character skin wrap back to this so I can get it working real fast and uh, just the skin will get on top of the stack there and you can see it now. So let's get it flexing and bouncing on there. So above skin I'm going to add the uh, flex modifier and we're going to do a little bit of setup so what we should be getting now is some crazy uncontrollable flexing going on so let's just go back to uh, an isolated uh, scene here and just watch it do the you know, craziness as it uh, hit play you can see the whole thing's jiggling all over the place uncontrollably so we need to lock some stuff down and right off the bat if you go into your edge birds this is the one of those things that's just uh, doesn't seem to be logical in the way it works, but uh, it just is the way it is with uh, flex. Is that if we select the outer edges of our flex modifier, so what you need to do is make sure this patch kind of goes out to the outer edges of where you want to have it flexing. So as soon as you do that, those outer edges won't flex anymore. They won't be part of it. Now you'll see the inside is flexing around. Now it's flexing around based on the center point. And the center point at this point is way down here. Now we could move it up there um, and, uh, and use it, put it somewhere else. But you're going to find that it's probably never going to give you exactly what you're looking for as far as the right kind of flex. So I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to say use weights. Use weights off no longer um, uses that blended weighting. So now you're going to see it tearing to the outside where it's not flexing because we have that selection selected in there. So what we need then is to do a little bit of uh, work on the weights and springs. So I'm going to go into weights and springs and just pick everything for now and enable it. And if we look at options, uh, we're going to go in and it'll often tell us the, the lengths to use. And we use hold shape springs. And I'm just going to take it down pretty low right now because I don't know what size to do. And I'm going to say add springs. I'm going to say show springs. And so we're getting some. We don't want a lot. We want some. And this is part of the thing of having a nice even mesh. Um, we want the springs kind of spring around evenly in between. So I'm just going to uh, go in and maybe just dial that up to a three. And try again. That's getting better. I'm starting to get 
not quite all of them. So I get 3.5. Now it's pretty good. So now it's going to blow up. You can see it's just freaking out and blowing up on us. And that's because when it says suggested strength, uh, um, 0 0.067 and our sh uh, su suggested shape strength and sway are much higher than that, it's going to blow up. So we just want to set those down to the suggested and then test it again. And you find now it doesn't blow up. Now what these springs are doing is, is they're trying to hold the actual piece together. So it's trying to spring it and hold it all nicely together. And you can see now that it is not just springing around the edges, but pulling, being pulled by the edges because the edges are actually controlling it. And you can see it rippling now in that area. So now we need to control that and try and slow that down. A couple of ways to do that. One, I'm going to change from Euler to Ronakuda, which is another algorithm. I find it works a little bit better for uh, keeping it together. I'm going to set the samples down to four. As the samples go down, it'll actually slow down the solution. So we can actually kind of make it a little wobblier, or we can take it up and make it a little harder as that solution goes up and down. So we may actually want to go up in this case for the amount that they're there. And we can also use these uh, values. Now, the flex amount, you really want to try and uh, avoid uh, cranking this up higher. It'll start to become unstable, but I mean, you can put it up a little bit. We're just going to leave it at one for now and see if we can uh, pull together. The strength is going to spring it back into its position faster. So if I crank that up, you can see it spring back in much faster. The sway actually is a poorly named uh, parameter. It should be dampening. So essentially, if we take the dampening down, it'll just keep going and just flop around forever. If we crank the dampening up, we'll get it very, very sort of, you know, dampen off. The, the uh, effect will stop quickly. So now we can play with our strength. get a little bit of spring going in there. I'm just holding down control to speed up or slow uh, and alt slow down your spinners as you're moving them and try and get a little bit of movement going. Let's try it back at five and see what we get. Maybe that's starting to look okay for our initial test to get this moving. So there's our flex for our leg setup. Now what's nice about setting it up on this model instead of the entire model is you can be changing your model and rewrapping back to this. So this could be applied right to the model as well, but I find that doesn't work as well. And it certainly is not as a flexible solution because I'm just going to be modeling changes or whatever made, and all of a sudden I'm going to have to go back and reset this up. Uh, two, you know, I'm only having to deal with flex on a given part, given area of the character that I can turn on or off and, and deal with on a part by part. So let's go and unhide our uh, character now, and let's set that up. So above skin, I'm going to add the skin wrap modifier. So I'll hit X again and skin wrap, and we're going to take the skin wrap modifier, and I'm going to wrap it back to the leg piece. So uh, here was the the trick was getting the um, you know not having the dependency loop happening, and this is why we remove the uh, skin wrap when we did it the other way, when we wrap the muscle to the body, uh, or else we'd have a uh, dependency loop now when we do this. So now what we want to uh, check, you can see it just probably going all over the place. We'll say blend to base mesh. And we can see it's starting to work. That's really ugly uh, overlaps happening on here. You can see it going outside of the mesh and just ripping and tearing the mesh outside. And that doesn't you know, look like what we're probably going to uh, have. We can also you know, start playing with blend distance maybe to solve some of that. But there's really a better solution just to uh, pass up some sort uh, you know, uh, pass up to it a, a soft selection. So we're going to do that uh, down at the bottom here. I'm going to add a vertex paint modifier. Now I like doing it with vertex colors and volume select modifiers as opposed to selections because they're just more controllable and allow you to control them. Up above skin, I'm going to add uh, a volume select. So the volume select modifier. I'm going to select vertices. And I'm going to base it on texture map. And that texture map is going to be 
the vertex color. So I'm going to go in and grab the vertex color map. So we've got the vertex color map in there. I'm going to say by vertex colors. And back down to vertex paint, we can just go in and flood the entire character. So I'm going to flood it all with black right now. So it's black. Let's just show that color. So it's completely black here. And I'm going to do one more thing. I'm just going to turn our um, uh, muscle that we have here transparent so we can see through it while we work. So now I can use the colors. And I'm just going to turn it white. And I'll get, grab the brush. And I'll turn the strength way down so we can paint it in a little bit by a little bit. And you can see now we don't have any of those ugly overlaps and ripping and tearing outside of the muscle area. So I can use the uh, um, paint tools now to start painting in that selection. Where is it going to be selected and how much is it going to be affected in any given area by that selection? So I can easily just go in, grab this, and maybe make this part of the muscle here. A little bit more. I'm going to turn up the weight a little bit. Paint a little bit faster. So I want to get a bit more flex in here, and I want to get a bit more flex down the back. I want to leave it down center and just try and get maybe that area flexing a bit more. So now what you'll see is because we're passing that selection up the stack, it's only going to be those two areas that we've really defined with a nice fall off that's going to be affected. You can even use the blur brushes, so I can say blur all, there's a blur brush, and I can blur that effect, soften it maybe. Now you can get it bouncing around nicely. Now, of course, all this is going to get slower and, and start causing just sort of speed issues. Sorry, above skin wrap, I'm also going to throw in um, really quickly just a selection uh, skin, uh, sorry, uh, Selection, uh, just a poly select modifier, just to deselect my verts so it's not trying to show them. And oh, down in uh, vertex paint, I want to go back and show just the uh, turn off the display. Now you can see you've got muscles starting to bounce around. Throw the wireframe back on, and you've got sort of a simple muscle flexi bit happening around that leg area. This can be applied to any area. You can make multiple patches of the uh, uh, flex modifier to control this. You know, we can go back and control the amount of it as well. And we can also go in and control, um, as, we, uh, as we start working with it, we can control the amount of uh, flex by how fast the character is moving. It's one of the problems with something like uh, flex is if the character jumps forward, it can get left a long way behind. We can actually ramp up and down the uh, flex value or the strength value if we wanted. So we can also you know, just animate that value so we can be getting ready to produce a shot. You have to uh, work with it just like you would any, uh, um, you know, any sort of dynamic solution is that you really need to go in and tweak it out for any given shot. So I'm watching it bounce around here. And I might decide that uh, really it needs to be uh, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less sway. So I'm going to take the uh, strength way down and let it really bounce around this time. Maybe pull the uh, sway back down a bit more. And you'll see that now it bounces all over the place. It does a nice job of uh, transferring that to given areas uh, and, uh, and getting it to affect the mesh in very, very specific areas. So the Volume select in the, the vertex paint. Vertex paint, by the way, can be collapsed into the base of the uh, stack when you're done. Having that being passed up to these selections and the skin wrap and wrapping to multiple of these patches gives you a lot of control about where you might uh, want it, like for instance, underneath the uh, jowls here and everything else. And of course, we'd probably want to paint mirrored and, and have our muscle mirrored to the other side when we're working on it. Um, we can add them uh, anywhere we need and, and uh, develop it from there. So there you have it, developing muscle systems, uh, or at least jiggly bits on characters uh, using the flex modifier.